All right, eighth graders, bear with me. I'm shooting this after school. There's probably going to be some interruptions with intercom. We might even have some problems with technology. If that's the case, hey, I can just pause the screencast recorder and pick up where I left off. Anyway, what you see on the computer screen right now is the program that I already started. This was in, what is, uh, Tuesday, Tuesday's video. Uh, in Tuesday's video, I showed you how to open up Robot C. I showed you how to configure the platform type. I showed you how to add uh, motors and sensors. And then I had you save this. So you need to make sure that you watch the video previous to this before you do any work. And then you need to make sure you have a copy of your file saved. And I suggested that you email it to the members of your group. Uh, so that everybody has a copy so it's always available to work with. Now what I have up here at the top, my motors and sensors are configured. Uh, I have the project title. I, I have my name. You'd want to put your group member's name there. Uh, I have the date that I started this and the class period that I started it in. Uh, my task description is to run a motor after a button is pushed. And to be more specific, uh, I use my pseudocode which is kind of a hybrid language between uh, natural language, which is the uh, computer programming language, and English language, which was in my task description. So I was being specific here. I said I was going to push a button, and I was going to have the right motor run for half speed at 10 seconds. So what I need to do now is I need to drag and drop some commands and then modify them so that it meets up with my motors and sensors configuration. Uh, I'm going to do that by coming over here to natural language. Now, before I come over to natural language, um, I want to double check my platform. Platform type, VEX 2.0, natural language, PLTW. So I'm good to go there. So I'm going to expand natural language. And in natural language, there's three things that I'm looking at for this program. I'm looking for movement. And in movement, there's a start motor and a stop motor. I'm looking for until. And in until, there's an until bump. And I'm looking for wait. So I've expanded movement. I've expanded until. And I've expanded wait. Now, the first thing I said I was going to do over here is push a button. So I'm going to do an until bump. That one always works good for me. And I drag that over. It says Intel bump. It says sensor port. Well, the sensor port is going to be my push button. If you remember that from motors and sensors setup, push button. I have to make sure that I type it. See, I forgot the H. See how it turned red? Uh, I have to make sure I type it exactly as it is up here. So there's my push button. It turned red. Uh, delay time doesn't have to be anything significant, so I'm just going to put a value of 1. So what's happening now is I'm going to push a button and my program's going to start. Well, what do I want it to do? I want the right motor to run half speed for 10 seconds. So I'm going to drag over a start motor and I'm going to place that under the Intel bump. Now what I should point out is that these two commands go between, all my, all my commands go between these red curly braces. So now I'm going to start motor. What motor do I want to start? Well, I want it to be the right motor. And again, I have to type it just like what I did above. See how it turns red? Remember, I capitalized that second word. I don't know why, it's just always that way. Half speed. Uh, maximum speed is 127. If you program it over 127, it's not going to do anything. So uh, I'm doing half of that, which is about 63. I'm going to start the motor. So I'm going to push a, a button, and the motor starts at half speed. So it's going to start, but I have to designate how long it's going to run for. So here's where I drag over a wait time or wait, and it says wait time. So I need to change the wait time to 10. So I push a button, I start the motor, it's running half speed, it's going to run for 10 seconds. 
and then I have to tell it to stop. So the computer is very picky, the program is very picky, you have to tell it exactly when to stop as well. So if I don't tell it to stop, it's not going to stop, even though I said wait 10. So here's my program. Push a button, start motor, right motor, half speed, wait 10 seconds, stop motor. So now I'm, I'm going to click up here on compile program. That kind of checks, checks it over. And I'm looking for any red X's. See, there's no red X's. I'm good to go. Let me give you an example of, of a red X. Let's say I spelled push button wrong. And I hit compile program. Uh-oh. So if you get a red X, that means you need to fix something. So let me correct that again. Compile program. Red X's go away. Now, here's my program. Let's look at what we need to do now. So what I have here, I have an orange cord. And on this orange cord, it has USB ends on both sides. So you have to take one end and plug it into the cortex. Plugs in back there. The other end has to go over to my computer. And I have to be careful as to what I unplug. Or I won't be able to, I don't want to unplug my camera. So I'm going to, I'm going to unplug my mouse. I don't want to do that. Let me pause real quick. Hold. Okay, we're back. I had to uh, run this cord way to the back of my computer. Now what you can see now is I have some lights flashing here. I have a red light and the green light. Let me slide that over a little bit. Now I also have to find battery. These are usually on the charger. Uh, if, the green, if the light is green on the charger, you can grab a battery. All I ask is if you take a battery off the charger, uh, you replace it with another battery so that it's ready for the next class period. So if you take a battery, you replace a battery. We're going to plug the battery into the Cortex and we're going to flip the cortex on. Now I have two green lights. That's a really, really good sign. Let me drag this over here where you can see. Let's go back to our Robot C program. And first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to do a firm, firmware download. What that does is it clears out the cortex. Uh, it gives it new memory. So if someone else used this before you, uh, you definitely want to do a firmware download uh, so that you have a fresh Cortex. And we'll hit OK. And this takes a moment. It's kind of like erasing a, a thumb drive. Uh, but if it starts showing the blue bars like that, that's a really good sign. If you don't get those blue bars, there's some troubleshooting you can do. Uh, you can go into Robot and manually uh, change the firmware if you have to do that and I can show you that if you're getting stuck. So we're going to hit OK there. Now we're going to hit download to robot. And we're going to click on the start button. Let's go back to our robot here. Now I should be able to unplug the USB cord. I have my two green lights. And now, keep your fingers crossed, I'm going to press the push button, and let's see if this motor runs for 10 seconds. Well, that was a long 10 seconds, but I think we got it. Now, if you were, like, making a vehicle or something that you wanted to run over, run, it, run the program again, simply shut off your Cortex. Turn it back on, and you can push that button again. And there it's going to run the program again. We push a button, it's running half speed for 10 seconds. And we can keep doing that program again. The only thing is, uh, when you redo the firmware, it's going to delete that. So I hope you have good luck trying this out. It's kind of exciting, uh, writing a program and getting some motors to run. So until next time, good luck.